Hello and welcome to round one here in the Zone Gaming. Steuben, as always, going it solo until someday we get lucky and find a guest commentator. But today we have Leland on the left versus Brayden on the right. Leland is playing Arceus and Teleon, and I believe Bla uh, Brayden is playing a Dragonite deck. I don't know if he put the V-Star in here or not yet, but we've seen Arceus Dragonite from Brayden on the channel in the past. It's been a hot minute since we've commentated anything, so I might be a little bit rusty. I apologize for that, but hopefully you enjoy everything that's going on. Leland is going to start off, though, with a level ball searching through the deck. Definitely going to see what is prized and what his options are. Uh, most likely line of play that we're going to see him grab a Sobble to start it off. We've seen Brayden play uh, this before as well. Uh, it's got a couple Dragonite V as well as some Starmie in here. But yeah, the Leland selection is that Sobble. He's going to throw that down to the bench. If he can get energy attachment off, uh, honestly, this is probably like just like the goat start for Argus and Talion. Usually you want to get that turn one energy attachment, get a couple Sobbles down, and then really be able to go on turn two with that Star Birth and start using Trinity Nova. There is the double turbo and a pass. See how Brayden takes it off. Looks like Brayden's got a little bit of a different hand here. I do see a Stormy Mountains and Evolution Incense. He does have the attachments here, but again, Leland will be able to swing in first, most likely. Brayden does attach the Water Energy as well as play a Stormy Mountains down. Most likely just going to grab the Dragonite from his deck here. See some different stuff in here than before. It looked like there was a Halucha. I don't think I've seen him play a Halucha in this list, so it's definitely an evolution there. And yeah, there is the Dragon IV opting to go with the good one, the promo. That can hit for 250 damage, but also hurting your bench. And there is the cut, of course. And let's see what else Braden can follow up with. It doesn't look like there's too, too much going on. I think it just got a... Hold and hope here at this point in time, uh, looking at their hand from what I can tell. Optimally, a double turbo would have been really good here just to be able to Trinity charge and accelerate this turn. But Leland is going to get the first off. Oh, however, Brayden's just going to go ahead and burn a boss's orders to bring that Sobble up and then pass it over. Uh, if Leland has access to a Drizzile, he can, of course, just get Scoop Up Net and then go from there or have, you know, a sort of switch option. We do see a big charm get attached to the Arceus V, though, to increase his HP by 30. There is attachment onto the Sobble. Um, maybe Leland has the Retreat and Melanie option, but yeah, actually, we're going to see them use the Stormy Mountains here. Double check their deck once again. There's definitely no Dragon or Lightning type Pokemon in this list, but probably just going to see them use the Keep Calling attack. I end up the three Sobbles, thinking about bringing them to the front. We're going to see that Stadium get bumped out on out of here. With a collapse stadium, reducing the bench size of both players down to four. And yes, there is the keep calling as predicted. So not the most gas turn from Leland. That definitely gives Brayden the chance to fight back. And especially with what they have in their hand. Uh, I do think we're going to see a uh, Evolution Incense into the V-Star here for the Trinity uh, Nova and the Starbirth this turn. All right. So yeah, I think this Evolution Incense is going to be the first play that he makes. Definitely thinking about choices here, but there is the V-Star. Looks like he had it, and he's just going to go in with the Starbirth here, able to search out any two cards from his deck that he desires. In this situation, he's definitely going to be looking for the double turbo energy to start swinging in here. Uh, they could start doing some damage on that Arceus, which would be a really good play here, but he did burn a boss already. But Dragonite will be able to get fully rocking and rolling here this turn. Still contemplating choices here. Uh, looks like that's a Crobat selected here. And there is the shuffling. So definitely those are some final selections here. I assume it was a double turbo and a Crobat from what it looked like I saw him eyeball and take. All right, there is the double turbo energy. And yeah, that is a Crobat V in hand. Still has a few other cards though. Uh, still has an Evolution Incense and an Ultra Ball. Could potentially just burn those cards with that Ultra Ball and then play Crobat to draw into things. I'm not quite sure if this is the correct select, uh, selection here, though. So yeah, there is that Ultra Ball. Looks like the Switch and the Lightning Energy were discarded. We could potentially see another Arceus or another Dragonite, and there is an Arceus coming down to the bench. Once Dragonite's up and loaded, once you put a Choice Band on that thing, it can hit for 300 and 
No, not 300. 280 damage. I apologize. And then there is the Crowback. Gonna drop a few cards. Looks like he found a Leon, an Energy, a Switch, and another Evolution Incense here. And there is the Choice Belt attached to the Dragonite, so he's good to go on that. And it looks like we're just gonna see the Trinity Nova here for 180 damage, taking a prize on the Sobble. First prize of the game. We'll see that energy get accelerated here on to most likely that Dragonite. So yeah, it looks like two water and a lightning. And we'll see how he spreads this around. One water onto the Arceus and it appears to be the water and lightning onto the Dragonite. He does have the extra energy in his hand. But let's see now how Leland follows up here, promoting a Sobble. Could just have a dead hand at this point in time. Not too much going on on Leland's side, from what I can see here. Heavily considering options in hand. Really would love to see a evolution here on to that Arceus V, so we can start using Starbirth this turn, and then get Trinity Nova rolling. But we do see a Quick Ball discarding an Inteleon. Could just be looking for another Arceus here. And then there is a second Arceus sitting on the bench, of course, limited by that Collapse Stadium. Yeah, there is the uh, Shuffle Cut. I was just going to say, are you going back in? We'll see what happens here. There is a turn attachment onto the Arceus V, and yet another pass. Leland is definitely... Uh, not sitting too well here. If Raiden has access to boss's orders this turn, he could really gain a lot of momentum. There's an evolution incense here. Um, most likely just going to grab the other Arceus V, sort of give that one that's uh, on the bench more HP. They have access to that Luminion somehow. Uh, they could find a boss here, and uh, it'd be really good to be able to just pivot into that Dragonite and just start wailing onto these Arceuses here. Looks like two switches of Water Energy, a Melanie, Arceus, and a Leon. So yeah, if he had access to a, a boss and a pivot, which he does in the form of the switch, he does have the energy for the Dragonite, he really could just gain even more momentum. We do see the attachment on to that Dragonite, so it is ready to rock and roll. Yep, and just another Trinity Nova. Taking another KO on a Sobble once again. And appearing to accelerate energy onto the Arceus V-Star that's on the bench. We're actually just failing out there altogether, but he does find that double turbo from the prize cards. Leyland once again promotes the Sobble, but this time he finally has a Drizzle out to start doing things with Shady Dealings here. And there is an Evolution Incense. We are definitely going to see that Arceus V-Star here. And there it is. And most likely that V-Star marker is going to be flipped right here now, so we can see a Starbirth grabbing him, whatever he needs to potentially get back into this game. Definitely being behind by two prizes does suck, but he does have access to things like Sharon's Care, so if Brayden somehow whiffs the knockouts here, can keep it in the game alive a little bit longer, but Leland does have the scoop up net to pick up that Drizzile, get it out of the active, rebench the Sobble, evolve the other Sobble in Shady Dealings once again. Not quite sure what his ultimate line of play could potentially be. We could see him go for the boss and KO that Crobat to even out the prize trade. And then it's going to be a little bit rough. Uh, he definitely has to accelerate energy of that other Arceus V this turn, because Dragonite is definitely going to come in and take two prizes next turn here. The amount of pressure that Dragonite can put down honestly reminds me of, like, Ice Rider Calyrex VMAX being able to hit for 250 uh, for its two energy and then accelerating that damage up with things like Halucha or Leon or Choice Belt, but just natively. Dragonite just needs a Belt or a Leon and it can take out any of these V-Stars in the game. Definitely considering what to do here, still has access to that V-Star power 
after the shady dealings. Just gonna go for a research first. Definitely always a solid move here. Get a fresh hand, see what you missed, and then use that V-Star power to grab those missing options. I do see a Melanie. Looks like a boss and a Sharon's Care as well in his hand as another Drizzile, and I can't quite tell what the last two cards are, but he definitely has plenty of choices here to make. If he has access to a Tool Scrapper, that would be huge. Uh, the Big Charm is definitely keeping him into the game, but Brayden does play that Leon, and yeah, here is the Star Birth. I'm gonna go ahead and flip that V-Star marker face down and search for two cards here. What two cards uh, will he take? I'm not quite sure. Most likely gonna be some sort of uh, energy to potentially attach to that Arcase on the bench. I know he has access to just swinging it and getting energy that way, but to be able to, you know, buff it up by a turn here, depending on how many energy are left in his deck and what is prized, could be a good selection as well. And it looks like he's made his selection there. Two cards coming down. Opting to not shuffle, so we're definitely going to see that attack this turn. And yeah, there is the evolution. Definitely one of the two cards grabbed. What the other one is, not quite sure yet, but we'll definitely see it in the next turn at least. And there is the Tool Scrapper to get rid of that belt. Definitely keeping Arceus in the game here. If Brayden can find another choice belt, that'll definitely make things a little bit easier. But yeah, here is the Trinity Nova for 200 minus the 20 from the double turbo, making it 180, accelerating three water energy from the deck onto the benched Arceus V-Star. That tool scrapper was absolutely huge here. Definitely going to be able to keep that Arceus alive, and we're going to see a Sharon's Care most likely next turn from Leland to keep it knock, being from knocked out. We do see a double turbo being attached to the other Arceus V-Star here to start Brayden's turn off. He had a nice line of play set up for him, but that tool scrapper really did just change a lot of things here. I'm planning putting down another Dragonite, it looks like. Does have access to Melanie. To potentially draw a couple more cards, but who's to say if it's the right play or not? Uh, optimally, a Sharon's Care would be huge right here. Yep, there's the new Dragonite hitting the bench. And I think he's just going to go ahead and swing in here. Doing 180, attaching energy from the deck here. Looks like he finds a Lightning, a Water, and a second Water onto that fresh Dragonite. And yeah, I think we're going to see definitely Leland use that Sharon's Care this turn to get that thing up and out of the game to prevent Brayden from taking two easy prizes in the future. Yep, and he's got the Shady Dealings Drizzile here evolving off that bench stobble. to be able to search out any help he needs. And there is the Sharon's Care. From what I thought I saw, he had one in his hand already, but hey, why not uh, just have it two turns in a row here? Feels really good. And there is that damage Arceus getting up and out of the active, being rebenched. Michael, we might just see another attachment onto it as well as that uh, the belt. Reconsidering putting it down, but there is the big charm onto that active. And following up with another level ball here after that Sharon's care play. We do know there's two Sobbles in the discard pile, so what he could get potentially would just be things like maybe Manaphy or Dunsparce that aren't really necessarily needed, just deck thinning at this point in time. And there is the Dunsparce. Neither of those seem to matter in this matchup whatsoever. And there's a scoop up net, picking up that Drizzile, putting the Sobble back down so we can use it next turn as well. I 
Still hasn't shuffled the deck, so we're most likely going to see some energy accelerated once again here with Trinity Nova. There is the Arceus hitting the bench finally. Contemplating attaching. But it decides to attach to the Drizzile instead. We could potentially see that Inteleon come in with a Hawkle Bullet here in the future, but there is the KO, the Trinity Nova. For 200 damage this time, not being inhibited by any double turbo. It's going to be able to take two prizes and attach an energy from the deck onto that Arceus V. And let's see how Brayden can follow up and respond. The game's definitely uh, tied up at this point in time, and the tempo is definitely swinging back in favor of Leland. Brayden is going to go ahead and play a Melanie, attaching a Water Energy from the discard pile onto the Crobat, able to draw three cards, to, probably just desperately looking for anything at this point in time. Looks like you found two Quick Balls and an Ultra Ball. Definitely not the cards that you want to see. And if Dragonite swings in here for 250, he is far, far away from the KO, as well as he's going to put some damage onto his own bench Pokemon, making it easier for Leland to take KOs, respectively. Yep, and there is the Dragon's Gale for 250 damage, and everybody on Brayden's bench is going to take 20. And potentially, if we see another Sharon's Care, this game is pretty much just decided at this point in time. There is a Shady Dealing's Drizzile evolving onto that Sobble. We do see Leland grab a Choice Belt. Definitely something you don't see too often anymore in Arceus and Teleon decks, but a really good call here. Putting it on into that new Arceus V. He's going to Sharon's Care, pick up the active, get that damage off the board, promote that undamaged Arceus, attach the energy, rebench here, and then it looks like, yeah, he's going to be able to go in for 230 and take two more prizes this turn. Big Charm coming down on the other Arceus. Oh, maybe not. Changing his mind here. But definitely able to take a big KO this turn. Really getting ahead. Two Sharon's Care is honestly just going to swing the entire tempo of the game in the favor of Leland. Another Arceus V does hit the bench here. Keeping his options open. And Trinity Nova for 230, I believe, is going to be the play here. We do see the big charm being attached to the other Arceus V. He could just be out of energy as well at this point. But yeah, I think we're just going to see him riffle through. But yeah, there's two more prizes for Leland. Two prizes left as easy as just bossing up that Crobat for game in the coming turns here. Or swinging into that fresh Dragonite. Alright, let's see how Brayden decides to respond to the situation. We do see a Quick Ball discarding a Quick Ball as well. Gonna search through. Uh, could potentially just find uh, that Luminion that we know he plays and find a supporter here. And yeah, there is the Luminion grabbing a Roxanne. Is he playing it? I'm not quite sure. I feel like, I think he has a Leon in his hand, and ultimately that would be the more appropriate play to take here. Uh, Leland wouldn't have anything to attack with other than potentially Inteleon next turn. We wouldn't be able to see an Arceus swing in here. But yeah, there's that Leon sitting in his hand. And that, honestly, would be the correct play here. But he goes with the Roxanne instead. Going to go ahead and shuffle in. Both players will be disrupted here. Brayden will get a handful of six cards. Leland will get two cards, but with access to things like Shady Dealings, potentially. He has access to whatever he needs, so that Roxanne might not be the way to go. It should have been that Leon coming down to be able to hit for 280 to take a KO on that Arceus, removing the threat from the board. All right, Leland gets his two, Brayden gets six. We'll see how this handles here. Double checking to make sure he drew six cards and no extras. Looks like he found a handful of supporters and a training court. And there's the fist bump. And yeah, he's got the incense and a Marnie. It wouldn't have mattered. Dragon would have been able to swing in. 
Uh, wouldn't have got a KO, but yeah, should have just played that Lee on there, but Leland does take the dub here in round one. Then uh, we'll see you in round two for some more Pokemon action. Hang tight. All right, and welcome back. We have round two here. We have James on the left rocking the Mewtwo V-Star deck that I built and showcased on the YouTube channel this past week. Go take a look out on that. Check out the iCard up below. Up below? Down below. Up top. And Evan, I don't know what he's playing, but we'll find out here for sure. Looks like a Mewtwo V-Star with Lunatone and Solrock here. Starting off the Battle VIP Pass, grabbing a Lunatone and a Radiant Greninja, the Manaphy and the Active. James is definitely going to have a hard time here with that Manaphy in play. Relying on things like Glare and Kuno to get rolling here. Evan is going to play a Hisuian Heavy Ball. Finds a Soul Rock there and shuffles in that Heavy Ball back into the prize cards. So definitely a solid start here from Evan. He's able to start using Greninja to draw some cards, accelerate the energy, and I do see a Fog Crystal in here, so that is going to be a Psychic Energy if need be, and there it is. All right, and there is the Shuffle Up, and yeah, it looks like we might just see that Greninja. There it is, the Concealed Cards, discarding an Energy to draw two. Finds another Lunatone. And we are going to see that power of the sun here accelerating the energy. And James is going to start off by drawing a card for turn. And we see an Ultra Ball. Discarding an Ultra Ball and a Psychic Energy. Going to peruse the deck to find some options. He does have access to Cresselia potentially here to start loading up a lot of energy onto a Mewtwo. And potentially in this matchup too, Cresselia trades really well here with a lot of other things going on. Whatever he's looking for is definitely prized. But he's considering, there's the Cresselia. Yep, and he has taken the Cresselia. So he must have a scoop up net and another searcher here to get this game rolling off. There's a Mewtwo as well. There's the Zashian V, another Mewtwo, and a free search for a full seven. Let's go. Looking for a scoop up net here and an energy card. And Cresselia can really start rolling. We do see energy in hand. Is that a scoop up net as well, or is that an evolution in sense? I can't quite tell. Double quick ball here. Potentially digging for a Bidoof to set that up onto the bench. He has an air balloon as well, so he actually has the pivot for the Cresselia no matter what happens here. There is the air balloon onto the Moltres, switching on out into the Cresselia. We are going to see that energy be attached, and of course that Crescent Glow will be able to accelerate additional energy from the deck. Following up with the Fog Crystal as well is just grabbing more energy here, getting ready to check things out. We do see the top of James's head. Deciding to grab an energy for the Fog Crystal, most likely. So, yep, there's the, the Fog Crystal selection. Basic second energy, putting it in the hand. And we are going to see a training court. No, he's considering not putting it down. I definitely don't think it's the correct choice to put down. He could have could been to just abuse it as well here with those rocks. Oh, he is putting the training court down. He is going to go ahead and use it, grab the energy back up into his hand. And then, yeah, we are going to see that Crescent Glow go in. Free energy coming out of the deck onto one of his Pokemon. Most likely going to be the Mewtwo here. All right, let's see how Evan responds to that turn. Not a lot going on. He's got it. Looks like energy retrieval. There's a rope. A research, though, and a boss. And a cross switcher and a scoop up net. So he has access to a handful of different things here. We could potentially see him play a few cards to his outs here. Yeah, there is the escape rope being played. James most likely will just promote the Articuno here. Because it has access to being retreated. If it gets knocked out, 
No harm, no foul. Evan does promote the Lunatone that has the energy attached to it. And yeah, there is the Professor's Research discarding all of those cards. However, getting a fresh hand of seven here. Found some V-Stars, found some energy, found another Soul Rock. But this is definitely a, a weird way of saying it's a Mewtwo Mirror match, but these lists are definitely, definitely different. We do see the turn attachment onto that Soul Rock and bumping out that training court with a Pokestop. Will we see him spin it, go for the greed? There is the concealed cards from the Greninja discarding that energy, drawing to. And he has access to the Soul Rock to accelerate it as well. Uh, Trekking Shoes does hit another energy and discards. He does find a Mewtwo, and he's going to put it down onto his bench here. And yet there is the power of the sun putting the energy onto the Lunatone. He is able to swing for 120 damage at this current moment in time. 30 base plus 30 for every energy attached to it. He's going to go for the Pokestop. And he mills a Soul Rock, a Psychic Energy, and a Research. He gets nothing. You took the Gobstopper, Evan. You get nothing. Going quite, quite the rough hand here. But yeah, Lunatone is going to go ahead and swing in for that 120 to take a KO on the Articuno, and Evan is taking the first prize of the game here. We'll see James respond. He does promote the Mewtwo V-Star that is fully loaded here. I'm sorry, the Mewtwo V, it's not quite a V-Star yet, but we could potentially see it become a V-Star this turn. And James is going to go ahead and use the Pokestop here, hitting an Ultra Ball, a Psychic Energy, and a Quick Ball, getting the two balls to his hand, discarding that energy. And then unfortunately, it looks like he did get that Hisuian Heavy Ball back as his prize card here. And it did not look like there were any other Pokemon in there for him to grab. And James is going in for the Ultra Ball. Looks like he's discarding two Psychic Energy here. Must have access to Energy Retrieval. There is the Bibberel coming down on the Bidoof, so we can start using Industrial Synthesizers to fill his hand back up to five once per turn. I definitely don't see uh, too much of a comeback from this turn on Evan's side, though, with what he's got in play and in hand. So James will be able to definitely take a KO here after making a selection here. Most likely just going to grab the Mewtwo V-Star at this point. Can't quite tell what he's taking. Yeah, there is the V-Star. That was the Ultra Ball selection here. And yeah, it looks like he's just going to potentially swing in. I'm not quite sure yet what he's going to do. Uh, he's got access to Industrious Incisors. I'm drawing three cards here. Four cards. Did he draw too many cards? Maybe not. I can't quite tell what he had. We do see that quick ball being played, discarding the Bidoof. Or the Crobat here. Yeah, he did, okay, he has three left in hand, so yeah, he didn't draw too many cards. Turn to Tamish uh, onto the other Mew. Two and a Crobat for four. Finds another V-Star, looks like another Articuno. Evolving the other Mewtwo into the other V-Star here. Setting up pretty well. And we are going to see the Marnie here. Definitely not the uh, best idea, because we've seen what Evan had in his hand. It wasn't too hot, but giving him four new cards might actually just be good for him. Keep him into the game a little bit longer. James will have a new five to work with, and he finds a training court to get rid of the Pokestop. And he's going to go ahead and use that training court to pick up an energy and put it into his hand. Pokestop definitely needs to leave the field here, though. 
And we just see one energy being detached here from the Mewtwo to take KO onto that Lunatone. Tying the game up. One prize down from each player. Evan does decide to promote the Lunatone here and then starting off. Uh, looks like a Trekking Shoes, some energy, and some Cross Switchers in hand. And Trekking Shoes finds a Battle Pass, discards it, takes the next card, and it happens to just be a Battle Pass again. Oh, you love to see it. You hate to see it. There's the Concealed Cards, discarding an energy, drawing two. Yeah, there's that Pokestop leaving play finally. There we go. Looks like he's got an energy to attach. He's got a quick ball. He's attaching onto the Mewtwo here, though. We're going to see that Battle Pass get discarded here with the quick ball. Not quite sure what he's going to grab. Maybe another Soul Rock if he has access to it to load up that Lunatone some more. And potentially swing this turn. Not enough for a KO by any means, but he can definitely get there over a few turns here. And has he made a selection here? Yeah, it is a Soul Rock. So we'll be able to attach two energy from the discard pile onto the Lunatone. He definitely has access to one in his hand as well. Plus he has the training court, so there's definitely plenty of energy in play for Evan to at least swing here for the bare minimum 120. All right, so here we go. Here comes the energy from the discard pile. And there is the fog crystal as well. I don't know. Wait, hang on. What is he? What is he doing? Let me let me let me stop him. Hang on. All right, that was just a cycle draw. It looked like it was something else, but easy fix, easy fix. And the game goes on here. Deciding not to attack this turn with the Lunatone, maybe he didn't have enough energy. But James does find Articuno, being able to attach some extra energy here as well. Really popping this off. Turn attachment onto the benched Mewtwo V-Star as well. Definitely got to shuffle up, maybe digging for a boss's orders here. Uh, nope, going for the research, discarding the Cresselia. Getting seven more cards here, furthering the game state. Choice belt onto the benched Mewtwo here. And I think James is definitely going to just go in here and take a... Energy out of the discard pile from that training court. And then, yeah, discarding one from the act to take the KO on the Lunatone, going down to four prizes remaining to Evan's five. Evan does decide to promote the Soul Rock here, contemplating what's going on. We do see the Choice Belt being attached to the Mewtwo on the bench. Looks like we're going to have an energy retrieval happen here. Grabbing two from the discard pile, as well as using the training court there. He did point to that, putting three energy from the discard pile into his hand. Another attachment onto the Mewtwo, and looks like the Greninja is going to go ahead and conceal cards, discarding the other one to draw as well. And here is a Rescue Carrier. Going to be able to grab back the two Lunatones. We will definitely see one hit the bench. He's got two copies of Cross Switcher here as well. And yeah, it looks like Cross Switches are going to happen here. He's going to go ahead and bring up the Zacian V. And Evan is going to bring up that Mewtwo. Yeah, we're definitely going to see the uh, Soul Rocks here load energy onto that Lunatone now at this point in time.
He's gonna go in with a pal pad. It looks like he's putting in a boss and a Marnie. I can't quite tell. Yep, here are the the power of the sun. Times two or just one, it looks like. And we're gonna see a Marnie as well. Shuffling his hand. Both players shuffling their hands. Going to the bottom of the deck, Evan will get five cards. James will get four. We're definitely going to see Evan take a KO this turn on that Zacian. He's got plenty of energy in play to do it. Did he not find... Did he not find... He did not find the V-Star. He's just going to swing in with that first attack, doing 60, I'm sorry, 80 damage. James does have the Air Balloon, going to be able to pivot on out of here and promote the other Mewtwo. And yep, there is the Retreat, getting the Zacian out of the active, promoting the Mewtwo here. Decides to promote the one that doesn't have the choice belt. Very good, very good. And he attaches a choice belt anyways here. So he just needs to use the training court, grab the energy back, attach it to that active spot, Mewtwo. We're going to see the Industrious Incisors draw a couple cards here. Fill his hand back up to five after being Marnied. Viverell definitely gives you that resilience to things like Marnie and Roxanne. So it's really good to be able to have access to those sort of cards. Mewtwo does have 220 HP, so he does have to discard 3 energy here. Gotta be very careful with your resources with this deck. Uh, you could just take the energy off the Articuno this turn and potentially just pick it back up with a net and put it back down and get energy in play again. But he definitely has to discard 3 here. It looks like he does have access to the scoop up net. So yeah, he's gotta discard 3 energy. Uh, he's gonna take 1 off the active and 2 from the Articuno to get those two prizes. Going down the two prizes remaining here in the game. And this Mewtwo Articuno versus Mewtwo Soul Rock Lunatone. Evan does decide to promote the Lunatone back up. It does have one energy attached to it. We see a turn attachment as well. And it goes in with the Professor's Research here. He definitely has to shift this game into a sort of single prizer mode here. But he does discard his hand, uh, discarding things like Boss's Orders and a few others along the way to get seven new cards here. Looks like he finds another cross witcher. He did discard one early on and he played two, so he doesn't that's just a dead card at this point in time. That'll pass as a dead card. Here is a trekking shoes though. And he finds an ordinary rod. Is he going to keep it? He decides to discard the ordinary rod and take the next card. He does find another Mewtwo here. If you put this Mewtwo down, it is definitely going to be a problem for you here. Uh, contemplating putting it down. It looked like he was going to. He has a V-Star as well, but decides to play another Trekking Shoes here. Finds the energy, decides to discard it, and takes the next card. Uh, he does find a Pokestop. He could potentially play it here. Um, yeah, he's going to go ahead and play it and bump out that Training Court. How many cards are even left in his deck? He could just be burning his entire deck away and self-milling at this point in time. And yeah, uh, we're going to go for the Pokestop here. How many cards are even left? There goes a Mewtwo. There goes an Energy. And a... Quick Ball, he does get the Quick Ball. It looks like there's one card left in his deck. Oh no! There's literally one card left in his deck. This game is 100% over at this point in time. He has access to some scoop up nets to slap some extra energy down onto that Lunatone, but yeah, uh, he's not going to be able to take five prizes in the course of two turns here. We do see two energy being attached from the Soul Rock's abilities onto that active Lunatone, and He's going to go for the full greed play, and he's going to play the double scoop up net, pick up those soul rocks, put them back down, and do it again. Getting six energy on this thing. Six times three is 180, plus the 30 base is 210, but it's not quite enough to get a KO here, especially when James only needs to discard one single energy to take a KO on a Lunatone. And they're counting it out. Yeah, and there is the 210 damage down. 
and James is off. Let's see what James can do here. He just needs to discard one energy. There's a Fog Crystal. He's definitely just going to find it. His deck is very small, but he's got a couple energy and energy retrieval left in there. There's the attachment. He's going to play another Fog Crystal as well here and grab another energy from the deck. He could potentially play a Scoop Up Net here, and there it is. There's a Scoop Up Net picking up the Articuno. He's going to be able to put that down and use Coral Charge here to attach two more energy from his hand to that Articuno. We're just keeping it up and out of the game just to make sure it can't get bossed around potentially here. He's going to go for the Pokestop. Interesting choice. Does find double energy switch here. Really good, really strong play. And there is the Articuno coming down. Here is the energy being attached to it. Two energy dropping down onto the Articuno with that ability. Cruel Charge. Playing the energy switch. Moving the energy from the Mewtwo V-Star to the other Mewtwo V-Star as well. Not having to worry about a turn attachment here. Keeping it alive this way. And yeah, he only has to discard one energy here. But we are seeing another energy switch. Moving that other energy from the Mewtwo over to the Articuno. Articuno can definitely seal the game up on the next turn here. He's going to go for the Industrious Incisors just for one card, and he finds a Marnie here. And depending on how many cards Evan has, could just be the sealed deal here. Definitely interesting to do that. It does give him a little bit more time and more life in the game. But we are just going to see the KO, discarding the energy from the active Mewtwo V-Star to take the KO. Going down to one prize remaining. This game is still pretty much just sealed up at this point in favor of James. Evan does decide to promote the Radiant Greninja. Benches another Lunatone down. And I think we're going to see a concession here. He's got no way to get out of the active, it looks like. He's going for the abilities, attaching the energy on to the Lunatone. He's got a Mewtwo V-Star, a Cross Switcher, and a Quick Ball, none of which does anything. And James just takes it over from here. Evan passes the game. James attaches an energy, and it swings in with the Mewtwo V-Star for the last prize card. James is going 2-0 with Mewtwo V-Star, the list that I have concocted. Again, if you want to see that list, it's over on my YouTube channel, where you're probably watching this later on down the line anyways. That's it for round two. We'll see you in the next one. All right, and welcome back. We are here at round three. We have Emily on the left and Gavin on the right. Gavin is playing Dialga V-Storm. Emily did mulligan a few times at the beginning here, so Gavin will get a few extra cards to start things off. He's got a Greninja in the active, starting off with the Trekking Shoes. Oh, that looks like the Battle Pass. He just takes it and throws that down. Emily does have the trusted and true Blissey in the active spot. Hey everybody, Mike here. Sorry to pause the gameplay, but due to technical difficulty in store, the VOD was corrupted and we are unable to show the rest of the match. Emily did beat Gavin's Dialga in a close game. Now, let's get to game four. Back to you, Steven. Alright, and welcome to the fourth and final round here in the Zone Gaming. We have James on the left and Emily on the right. They're both 3-0 into the final round. Emily is, of course, playing Blissey. We've seen her on stream already in the previous round, taking the dub over Dialga V-Star, and James playing the Mewtwo deck that we have on the YouTube channel. Go check that out. He's playing with my cards. He asked to borrow a deck, and he made it 3-0, so I'm actually pretty impressed here. But Emily decides to bench down a Yvettel, just so she doesn't get donked, it looks like, and there is the Milt Tank in the start, and a Path Peak to potentially shut off some of James's plays, and yeah, there goes the Crobat. He's gonna go ahead and discard that with an Ultra Ball, and a Bibarel. Must have a second one. At least access to it. Contemplating on what to do here. Path does shut off a few options here for James. And considering taking the Zigzagoon, it looks like. I feel like the, the appropriate play here would be Cresselia if it's available, but it doesn't look like it is. The Cresselia might be prized. I don't think I saw it. It is a gold 
secret rare in here, so we definitely be able to see it if he passes it by. It's got the three V stars and two V's in there, so looks like he's gonna go ahead and take the V, the Mewtwo, and put it down on the bench. Yeah, no Cresselia. Both players having an awkward start here. But yeah, there is the Mewtwo V hitting the bench. 220 HP, two attacks. One that does 50, and one that does 180 and moves in energy. We do see the scoop up net picking up the Articuno. James has decided to just promote the Mewtwo up. Gonna go ahead and bench on the Articuno, attaching an energy onto it with its ability cruel charge, and there's a research discarding a Ultra Ball. And it looks like he might just be stuck here, too. Both players off to a terrible start. Emily probably has supporters in her hand. There are tons of supporters in this Blissey Mill Tank deck here. And there is a Quick Ball discarding a Marnie from James' side. Could potentially be going for the Bidoof. He could go for the Zation, but again, Path to the Peak is in play. No Stadium to bump it. Definitely could be a problem there, but yeah, there is the Bidoof. This could just be a attach pass sort of situation here. If he has access to an energy card. But yeah, no, that's just a pass over to Emily, and she's going to go ahead and start off. She does find a capture energy. It looks like she does have access to some supporters here. And yeah, ooh, considering, considering the capture, there it is, onto the mill tank. Block underneath path. Definitely can't get Greninja and start drawing cards that way. Could just go for the Blissey here. But again, not going to be able to swing with it this turn. After that attachment onto the Mill Tank. Not attacking with Mill Tank either here. But definitely would have needed a double turbo to start rolling. Yep, there is the Blissey from the capture hitting the bench. 250 HP. This thing can be an absolute monster sometimes. And there is the Avery, just going to go ahead and draw three this way. If James had a larger bench, he may have had to discard some Pokemon from it, but doesn't doesn't have to with a bench of two. And yeah, just a pass back over to James. This is definitely an old-fashioned brick-off, as they call it. There is the V-Star to evolve off of that Mewtwo. And we are going to see a Zigzagoon. A counter is going to get pinged onto something on Emily's side here. And decides to put it onto the Blissey, and we do see a scoop up net for the Zigzagoon, putting it back down, putting it onto the Blissey yet again. Putting an air balloon on the Bibberel, the Bidoof, it will become a Bibberel, and then research discarding that energy switch. Does find a few energy, does find the Bibberel as well here. And there is a Fog Crystal. Energy switch would have allowed him to attack potentially this turn, but again, you know, you can't really go through the mill tank here with that Mewtwo V-Star. You definitely do have to attack with the Articuno. Fog Crystal does decide to grab another Galarian Articuno for him. He could bench it down here and potentially just Cruel Charge and set up a Snipe. Yeah, there it is. Cruel Charge attaching two energy from the hand, just like how Galarian Moltres does the same thing with Dark. The single prize Galarian birds all attach to energy when you attach them from your hand to the bench. And there is an energy switch picking up that energy off the other Articuno and moving it over to the Mewtwo. We do see a scoop up net well, yet again, picking up the Zigzagoon, putting in a, another counter onto that Blissey. And then, yeah, here is the Industrious Incisors. Gonna hand, draw their hand up. Yo, Kyle, thank you for the resub. 21 months, man. Much love, much love. And here is the turn attach onto the Mewtwo. James has already played a supporter this turn. Yeah, there's no way of really getting in there with Mewtwo this turn, but could potentially set up a KO on Blissey in the future here. I 
And yeah, it looks like a pass back over to Emily. Let's see the follow-up here. Looks like some hyper potions in hand. And I'm gonna take a look at James's discard pile here. And we are gonna see a boss's orders on to the other Articuno. Def definitely checking that discard pile. Uh, helped her make that decision for sure. Just could be a bunch of scoop up nets in, the, in there. And we did see that Zigzagoon come down a few times, and we did see some net action early on. Yeah, it looks like just a boss and pass from Emily. Playing the long game here. Yep, another Fog Crystal. Gonna be able to search the deck for either a basic Psychic Pokemon or a basic Psychic Energy. Put it into their hand. And there is the Energy. If James has access to another Switch card, potentially we could just see the Bench Articuno get the Energy here and go for that Psy Laser on to the Mill Tank. And yeah, there is the attachment here. Choice Belt on to the Mewtwo V-Star. Trying to thin down that hand here. And... Going in with the third and final research, discarding an Ultra Ball, and I can't quite tell what else has hit the bin here. And does it decide to bench another Mewtwo V? And looks like some sort of Surge card discarding an energy here. Could have just been an Ultra Ball or a Quick Ball. I can't quite tell what hit the bin there. Grabbing that Zacian out of the deck. Pretty much useless in this matchup with all the Path to the Peak that Emily plays in this list. And yeah, it looks like it's going to hit the bin as well for another Ball Search. Looks like a Quick Ball. Leaving him down to one or two cards in hand. Not quite sure what they're going to grab here. Just deciding to fail it. Looks like he's got three, three cards in hand. Continuing even further, looks like an Ultra Ball, discarding a boss and a Psychic Energy, just shuffling up, failing to get it, and then digging in deep here at the Industrious Incisors for a full five, trying to find a switch out between a Balloon or a Net. Does find the fourth and final Scoop Up Net to promote that Articuno. And James does decide to put a Training Court down. To bump out Path of the Peak and uses the training court, picks the energy up out of the discard pile, puts it into his hand. Still has access to another Articuno here. He's gonna have to rely on these to really get there through these mill tanks. And decides, yeah, to bench that Articuno back down and use Cruel Charge, getting two energy on there. And yeah, Psy Laser is gonna go ahead and take the KO on that mill tank, taking the first prize of the game. It's been a long one here for sure. Just now taking the first prize. Emily does decide to promote the Vettel. Trying to maybe buy some more time. Could potentially just have a really dead hand. Looks like a Hyper Potion in hand. A Capture Energy as well. I'm not quite sure if there's some sort of supporter there. And yeah, just a pass over to James at this point. After that, we do see a turn attachment onto the Articuno. Decides to put it onto the other Articuno here. Is James going to dig a little bit deeper? We do see the other Mewtwo evolve to the V Star and going in with the Industrial Synthesizers, drawing through this deck like there's nothing to it. Gonna go ahead and use the training court, taking that energy from the discard pile, putting it into the hand. And going in with a Marnie here. Yeah, Emily definitely needs a new hand at this point in time. James is digging for some sort of pivot. All four scoop up nets seem to be gone. And whatever he just had he put on the bottom of the deck there, Emily is gonna get a whole new four cards. Definitely find some energy cards as well here. James did find that second air balloon, so he can move 
out of that spot, but he has no way of bossing here. Gonna go ahead and move into the Mewtwo. Our Mewtwo will have to eat two energy here to get the KO on the Vettel. Yep. Go ahead and taking one off of the active and one off that Articuno to take the second prize here. And Emma is just left with that Blissey, but it has a full new hand here to potentially do something. I do see a research here as well. Looks like double turbo. Lucky. Uh, there is the double turbo being attached. And there is the research. Discarding a capture, a switch cart, and a lucky energy. Definitely has to find a few things here. James needs four prizes to win, but could potentially run out of gas and cards by the time that he could get to the point where he can take those four prizes. Emily does find another Blissey and decides to put it down to the bench here. We might just see a Blissful Blast. And there is the Quick Ball, discarding another energy into the discard pile. Going through the deck here. We do see the Tornadus in the front. Uh, could potentially going to be grabbing that Mill Tank here as well. Nope, decides to go for a third Blissey to thin the deck out here. And here is the Blissful Blast, grabbing those two lucky energies and a capture from the discard pile, putting it on there. And yep, yeah, 80 damage total from the reduction of the double turbo. And James is going to go ahead and use the training court, grab the energy attached to the Mewtwo. Is going to have the discard three energy here to get the KO. Really contemplating the choices that they're making here. Do you see a couple more energy cards in there? Again, James is officially out of air balloons and uh, everything else. Oh, he's going to go ahead and just discard the three energy off the Articuno here for the KO on the Blissey. And of course, his lucky energy is going to draw a couple more cards before anything happens here. James is down the two prizes remaining. All right, let's see what Emily will do here. Definitely has a large enough hand to be able to do plenty of different things here. Turbo being attached to that Blissey. Contemplating something here. Looking like a Zinnia's Resolve is the selection. Considering what the discard she will draw. A lot of new cards here. Going with a Quick Ball though. Discarding the Tornadus. And grabbing the mill tank and throwing it down on the bench. And here is the Zinnia discarding another Zinnia. As well as another Blissey. Gonna be able to draw a lot here. James has six Pokemon in play. Looks like she finds a Dunsparce. Doesn't matter in this matchup whatsoever. Could just be discarded for something else. There is 
the cape of toughness being attached to that blissey and yeah we're gonna go ahead and see a blissful blast here if james can get all the energy needed here could just see it happen and yeah going for the two luckies as well as another double turbo slowly chipping away and james is off to start tons of energy in the discard pile bosses in the discard pile all the nets are in the discard pile definitely running out of some options here Turn attachment on to that Articuno. Using the training court, taking one energy. And then let's see what could potentially happen here. Trying to just stall for some time, it seems. Definitely not able to attack with a Mewtwo. Could it be potentially baiting the Raihan play here? Catching a powerful energy to the inactive Blissey. And going for the boss's orders on to the Articuno. We'll definitely be able to wipe another energy off the field here, but I think if James has the Raihan. It's pretty much just locked up at this point. Emily is taking a prize here. He does decide to re-promote that Mewtwo V-Star. Here's the training court grabbing an energy, putting it into his hand. And we're near Rod. Gonna go ahead and shuffle in Articuno and two energy cards. And there is the Fog Crystal. Grabbing the Articuno back from the deck. Gonna go to put it down. Attach two energy to it here. Attach the energy to the Mewtwo. And yet, there it is. Just gotta discard three. Thank you to the Choice Spell for able to hit exactly 300 damage. And take the last two prizes on that Blissey. Mewtwo taking the dub, going 4-0 and oh with my very own Mewtwo V-Star list. Very well played from both players. Emily definitely had a really bad hand, uh, but was able to attempt to start doing things. Uh, we could have potentially seen the Raihan play. I thought James was baiting it, but nope, it was left in his deck. There he is talking about it there. But GG's to both of them going 4-0 for James and 3-1 for Emily tonight, both taking some zone points here from the tournament series. There's just six tournaments left in the series. Uh, not counting the monthly specials. There is one of those this coming Saturday. I'll be participating in that one just because it's a little bit heavier on the prize package and it's a long, long time to stream those. But I hope you guys enjoyed this tonight. Don't forget, if you're watching this later on YouTube, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I would appreciate any of that. And thank you for all the crazy support recently on both here, Twitch, and Twitter. Uh, much love, much love.